Oh my gosh, all the people. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, everybody. All right. Yay. BE is here. Oh, hey, it's Ash. <laughs> Hi, how's it going? Look, and oh, oh, it's, um, well, I'm up in Minnesota. It's hot. Oh, right, so right. If you, can, if you can hear some noise in the background, that's my AC going. Oh, <laughs> trying to get some cool air circulated. Yay. Well, all right. Welcome, everybody. Um, let me know if we want to wait for a second, Jeffrey. Do you want to? Shall we? Shall we? Um, well, you know, what, um, why don't we do this? Um, uh, welcome everybody to get to know this month's get to know VO. Um, this is um, a series that we do on the third Wednesday of every month. Um, just a time where we. Um, focus on a subject that has to do with voiceover that might be helpful some might be something on your mind might be something you want to know a little bit more about um we recognize that um that everybody who comes to these calls might be at different parts of their journey so um do we have the poll up jeffrey can we get the poll up? launching poll now yeah. So um, in order for us to uh, guide and, and uh, know who we're who who who's here with us today and where you're at on your journey, if you could take a second to um, to fill out this poll that Jeffrey just put in, then we'll have a sense of how to calibrate um, and uh, and uh, speak, speak to everybody clearly. Um, and if you want to put in the chat where you're calling from, you know, bees in hot Minnesota, um, <laughs> but and, uh, Jimmy's in hot Arizona. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, just, yeah. So, oh, hi, Kelsey. Awesome. Juno, is it hot, Sean and Juno? <laughs> hot Alaska, rainy Florida. This is cool. <laughs> The Bronx, yay! All right, and uh, let's see. Are you getting the responses to the poll, Jeffrey? Is it showing yep. up? Okay, awesome. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, because you're you're the host, so I'm not seeing. I'm just a, there. We go. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. All right. Okay, so so everyone's pretty much on their journey in some way, right? Uh, or many of us, many of us. Okay, good, good, good. This is really helpful, guys. Um, cool. Uh, do, 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 do. Right. right. We're getting that initial trickle in. Why don't we go ahead and proceed into our show? Okay. Well, welcome, welcome everybody. Um, I'm Tish Hicks. I'm the Master Sensei of the VO Dojo here in Burbank, California. As I said just a second ago, um, this is our Get to Know VO series. And today we are talking about home studios and um, the idea of how you can do it um, on a budget, um, on a shoestring. How can you be thinking creatively to um, start your business with what you have, what resources you have, what you can find, um, and get started um, on your journey. Um, Jeffrey, uh, many of you already know, is our Dojo team member who's here. Uh, and he is in the background uh, if you need anything. Um, uh, he's he's here. Um, Tyler Ashley is also part of the, the Dojo team, and she is here to support us as well. And uh, I'm super excited to have Sensei Stephanie Reggio join us. She is one of our team of Senseis. We have four Senseis, myself, uh, Sensei Steph, um, uh, Sensei Kat, who's based in Minnesota, and uh, Sensei Terry, who's based in Atlanta. So whole team, whole team of, of senseis that are here to support everybody. Um, so uh, let's see, let's let's get started. Let's get started. Um, all right, so I'm going to share my whole screen. 
Let me get my presentation up and share my whole screen. And here we go, starting here. Share screen and share the whole screen. And let's do this. And see how it goes. OK, can you guys all see that? Yes. OK, so here we are, the VO Dojo. Um, Jeffrey, did you see the next one? Yes. Awesome. OK, so here we are, get to know VO, how to build your home studio on a shoestring or, you know, if you have a strap or something, <laughs> those, those strappy things, those strappy, scrappy things. Um, so let's see. So let's, let's share a little bit about us. Um, um, I'm, uh, I'm Tish Hicks, the Master Sensei here. Um, I've been in the, I'm originally from Chicago, I've been in the voiceover business uh, in LA for going on 30 years now. I've been the voice of Subaru for the past 13 years, I was the voice of Citibank for seven years, I work in pretty much all the genres. Um, and uh and then uh, about 10 years ago started the the dojo which i'll which i'll talk about in a little bit um and sensei steph can you introduce yourself yes good morning and hello or good afternoon for some of you um i'm stephanie reggio i am currently based in northern arizona but i'm born and raised in los angeles that's also where i got all my training Tish and I actually met at college at Northwestern University. We were both theater yeah. majors. I was, I've been doing voiceover for probably just a little, a few years less than Tish has, so, or fewer. So it's been quite a, quite a journey. I've been working also for, uh, in all the genres that basically your voice for hire, wherever they want to hire me. I also do singing uh, work when I can and join the sensei, join the dojo about, I think it was almost coming up about a year and a half ago. So, and it's been very exciting and, and I'm happy to be here for this because MacGyvering a studio from the basics to your full home thing is one of my specialties. <laughs> I've been doing it for years. Yeah, I've, I've always tried to get really creative and save money at the same time as I was starting out my home studio work. So happy to and, be here to spread some info. And in addition to being an extraordinary uh, voice talent, as uh, Steph said, she's also a singer and a musician. So her understanding of the the recording and the tech side is is strong. And you've built many home studios from the <laughs> simplest to the whole, the whole enchilada. So um, <laughs> excited to have you here. Yes. Um, Okay, so uh, just real quick about the VO Dojo. Uh, I think I'm preaching to the choir here, but if this is your first time here, um, VO Dojo is a full training program that is designed to take you from I don't know to working pro, meet you wherever you are and take you where you want to get to go. Um, we have a development division that uh, starts with our You Should Do Voice Over Launchpad um, the, and a full 14 month training program that's called from mystery to mastery that's divided into belt levels. So depending on where you are in your journey, that's where we meet you. And we have our working pro division, which is called the nth degree and, um, our VO dojo pro fight clubs, uh, which are, uh, bring together top notch talent with the decision makers who hire us in different genres. We had one with, uh, DB Cooper last night that was like, mind exploding. So that's a little bit about us to put us in, in context here. Now, um, let's, let's, let's jump in. Let's jump in. And um, uh, I want to lay some lay some framework for um, I guess, I guess, uh, it seems like a lot of let me just look at the poll here. A, a lot of us are um, just starting brand new. Um, how can we do a show of hands of who has a who has a studio? That would be an interesting question. How would we ask that, Jeffrey? Can we just like do a fake hands or um, what would be yeah, a good either way? fake hands or type it in the chat? Let yeah. us let us know. Yeah, concerned think, minds are are inquiring. <laughs> yeah, and um, I don't have my chat up. So if you oh wait, hold on. No, I can't. I can't control the. I can't control the car. Um, but if you can give me a little update on that, Jeffrey, so we know. So we're going to start with a couple of things that that are how how to be thinking about things. That's that's how what we do at the dojo is there. There are things and skills and stuff to know, but we like to 
we like to keep on making frameworks of how you can be thinking about things so that you know how to think about things and go forward, right? So we'll talk a little bit about mindset. We'll talk a little bit about basic elements and evolution of a studio. So we're going to be talking about, we're going to be talking well, at the same time that we're talking about starting out thriftily starting out with what you know in the basic way we're also going to to uh open up the vision and have you understand what can happen as you continue on your journey right. a great way to think about this is if you're if you're starting on your voiceover journey you are in a gestation period you have a little baby a little baby thing that has been conceived a baby business that has been conceived and um, your studio is basically the space in your home where you are going to be running your business. So in, in that baby metaphor, you can think of this like your studio is where is this baby going to live? And of course, when we have babies, we all want to have this fancy, well, well appointed, um, totally color coordinated um, uh, nursery. However, babies will be just fine if you open up one of those drawers and put in some cozy blankets for a little bit, right? But we don't want our baby to grow up. We don't want our baby to stay in that drawer. It's going to grow, et cetera. It's going to need more than that. So just a, a way of thinking about what we're, what we're gonna be talking about today and maybe where you're at and where you wanna be. Um, so some mindset thoughts. Uh, one thing that I find really, really important as you're talking about anything tech, particularly, particularly at the beginning of your journey, um, but also wherever you are on your journey, tech is part of what we do. It needs to be part of what you have an understanding of and a comfortable relationship with. So it's good to um, identify yourself on the tech spectrum. Um, one being a technophobe and 10 being a total gearhead. So um, why don't we have people put in the chat, like, what, what would you consider yourself on the, this tech spectrum? Because um, you may not know anything about putting together a booth, but you may be like, oh, I know I could, you know, I can, I can get the, you know, the audiovisual things. I, um, I can connect my remote or whatever. I can set up, I can set up uh, complex systems like that. That's no problem. Or um yeah what 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 are what are people saying jeffrey i can't see the chat it's a good mix um there's a few people that have a dedicated booth set up some have a portable um in process booth and other people have no booth to speak of as of yet uh-huh and what about the tech spectrum what, a technophobe to gearhead well we haven't seen a 10 or a one yet it's pretty middle of the lane uh, a couple of threes uh -huh. mostly in the six region Okay, good, good, good. That's a that's a good place to be. That little green zone. Awesome. Good, good, good. Excellent. Um, so today, uh, the the other thing that I want to instill is uh, tech can be very overwhelming. Can get quite technical. The idea here is that we want to instill is keep it simple. Um, hold on a second. Let me just this out of out of the way here. I want to see you, but I want to see the whole thing too. Hold on one second. Okay. Uh, there we go. Okay. So keep it simple. Get what you need. Get comfortable. Get help. And get creative. That's kind of what we're going to be talking about today. So, um, and just understand that you are at the beginning. And there's there's a um, there's a, a an, um, an x y axis thing of knowledge and time. You may be here and you will reach here. So know that you're on this journey. So the things that seem impossible and overwhelming and how could ever happen, you'll keep on going and, and growing. Um, this is this is something that we also want to instill. Um, our uh, um the, we we work with dan leonard uh and this is this is something that he instills um which comes first you don't get fancy equipment to get work you get you work to get fancy equipment so i think you know when we all start driving 
um, well, not me because I didn't get my driver's license until I was 23. So this wasn't like my heart, but in general, um, when, when you're like about, when you're getting your driver's license, we all want to get the fanciest, you know, like we dream of the fanciest car and when we get that car. Um, but we don't need that when we begin, right? And then we do things to get those fancier cars. Um, so let's keep on going. So let's talk about the elements, what a studio needs, because it's hard to build something if you don't know what it needs. And um, so there's things that you need to be able to do in your studio. That's record, uh, convert your, um, your uh, analog to digital. You need to be able to edit and you need to be able to listen, right? This is called your audio signal flow. And there's things that you have to have to have, um, is that pole in the way? Can, can you guys see the pole? Um, let me just, hold on one second. I need to get rid of that. Okay. Sorry for these little glitches. Okay. So um, do uh, and uh, have. Um, I think sometimes when we get so absorbed, no pun intended, in um, a sound sound mitigation or sound uh dealing with sound we forget um things like ventilation and lighting and um and that we have to have good connectivity so we need to have quiet we need to have ventilation and we need to have connectivity so um so the first thing we need to do is have something to record with um so there's a range of ways that you can get started um, and you can get started for, you know, as little as a hundred dollars with a microphone. The Audio Technica AT 2020 is a really solid, a solid USB, uh, mic that you can get, you can, um, you can get started with and, and keep on building. Um, so here's a little range of 100 to $350. Um, we have a, a wonderful working relationship with Apogee. Um, I highly recommend their, their hype mics. Um, and and I think at, at about the 350 point, you um, are bridging, you're bridging the territory where um, the highest end USB, like a hype mic, um, is in the range of really solid, um, really solid workhorse um, uh, condenser mics as well. So you want to kind of figure out what that is. Um, so mostly we want to be talking about condenser mics versus dynamic mics um so i would say uh thinking about about that um but a three three hundred dollars for a condenser mic is is a pretty pretty good place to start um you'll also need a mic stand a boom arm a shock mount to keep the vibrations out and possibly depending on how you're set up a pop filter um, if you're set up in a certain way where your mic is coming down at you, you don't really need that as much. Um, so here's some ways to be thinking about, you know, the uh, definition of shoestrings, right, is, is different for everybody. Um, what we want to instill in you is that there's ways to be thinking creatively about how to get what you need. Um, there's always things that uh, are being resold. There's a great Facebook group called Video Gear Exchange that you can join. And there's always someone upgrading or willing, you know, and or willing to buy your equipment when you are upgrading. So whatever you're investing now, think of it as I will be able to uh, trade that in. Someone else will need it as I'm going up. Um, there's the approach of B stock. There's a great um, audiovisual con um, uh, resources like Sweetwater um, that uh, often sell B stock, like things that have been returned, and you can get good prices on that. Um, also, uh, think about um, uh, you know, find, think about and keep your eye on places that sell equipment like B and H and Sweetwater and Musicians Friend. Um, when there are sales, like get on their mailing lists, et cetera. Um, and uh, both of these places have really good finance uh, programs. Uh, 
you know, everyone needs to be starting their business with an awareness that we don't want to go into debt to start our business. But, um, but if having the equipment we need to start making money is something that makes sense, then that making that investment in your business with the understanding that when you have the credit, you know, when you have the equipment, then you will be able to start making money. That is how you can approach it. Um, but both of these places have um, ways that you can get equipment that are really quite, quite, a, quite affordable. Um, you know, and then you just need to take responsibility for that. Does that make sense? Um, okay, so microphones are a piece of equipment that you need and um, and there's ways that you can get what you need. How about that? Um, if you're working with a condenser mic, you'll need um, an interface, an audio interfa interface. Um, there's lots of lots of <laughs> lots of degrees of this. I personally have I have an Apogee Duet, and I also have a Focusrite Scarlett. I have one in my uh, my former um, in my former uh, cl closet setup. And I actually have one here in this booth as well. It's a really solid workhorse thing. And uh, it's, you know, like a hundred bucks. So, and then you also need to um, have a computer, a Mac or a PC or an iPad. Um, iPad is a great, a great way to start. If you don't have a computer that's up to speed, um, get an iPad. Uh, you can get one for not very much money. So that, those, are, those are ways to think about things. Let's keep on going. Um, you need a way to edit. Luckily, there are lots of awesome, free and low cost or affordable um, programs that can be your DAW, your digital audio workstation. Um, uh, Audacity, GarageBand, OSIN. Um, I personally use Twisted Wave because I'm a Mac person. Um, what, what, uh, what DAWs do the people who have their setup, what DAWs do you use? But, but maybe put that in the chat. What are what are people working on? Um, what are, what are people saying, Jeffrey? What do we got there? A lot of Adobe auditions, a lot of Audacity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Even so it, fifty fifty. Oh, we got one twisted wave. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Good. 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 Okay. So you guys are on to what what is free? Yeah. Good. Good. Good uh let's see uh you need a way to listen some sort of headphones um and or monitors um we do need to we do, do need to know that um in our signal chain uh our weakest link is our as as strong as our signal chain is right so we don't want to get a really fancy microphone and then have really completely poopy bad um headphones because that will that will that will impact not ruin but impact the whole the whole thing um and you know when you're really starting um well it's good to have headphones for when you're doing sessions and stuff like that when you're really really starting you don't even need them in fact when you're really really starting and developing your skills uh, we like to train at the dojo that you don't work with headphones uh, because it makes you hyper aware of uh, of your voice. Um, let me just see where we're at for here for time. Uh, let's do let's do a, let's do let's do a little experiment that I call the poor man's cans. So um, if if you if you haven't had the experience of working with with headphones, um, uh, do this. Put your put your arms up like this. Uh, like put, put them uh, behind your head and now speak into your space, speak into your room and see what it feels like and how does that feel. And while you're speaking into the room, now put on your poor man's cans and bring your elbows in and, uh, and now keep on speaking into the room and see what a different experience it is and how your awareness of anything but your voice um is kind of change <laughs> like it just makes you totally aware of just you and really what we're doing when we're when we're 
sharing as voiceover artists is we want to have that connection. We want to be in the room and connecting with somebody. So we need to be able to use headphones because it's part of it's part of our setup. And when we're working on sessions, we need to be able to use them. But if you're just starting out, um, know that you can not use them and develop your skills of listening and then keep on practicing with them. OK, um, yeah, uh, do avoid noise canceling in air and gaming headphones if you can. They're designed for different purposes. In fact, noise canceling is about shutting voices out. So um, so just understand that that's a good thing. OK, let's keep on going. Um, we need quiet. Sound absorption and sound isolation are the two things that we that we need to create in our creative shoestring way. So um, here's uh, things that absorb sound. So that is as simple as the closing close in your closet, a beautiful, beautiful sound absorption and then sound isolation of where you're going to set yourself up. So it's the least noisy, right? So not where there's a big window with traffic going through. Um, interior closets are great. Basements are great. Um, not near your uh, mechanical equipment. Um, and then also, you know, the variations of double walled construction, air in between space. Um, ventilation. This is like, this is my quest. I have this booth and I haven't quite gotten the ventilation down. It has a ventilation system, but it's June gloom is over here in um, in LA and uh, um, it's getting hotter. So, uh, but you want to keep you want to keep this in mind as as you're building your space. I think people like build their little clubhouses and then they have to sit in them and then they lose a lot of weight because it's like a sauna. So uh, things to keep in mind are fan noise, um, air conditioning. Um, uh, my friend Liza Ber Berzins, uh works all the time and she has a whole like ice pack vest system that she uses to keep on going when it gets hot. Um, so just to know those. Uh, and then connectivity. Uh, having good internet is the only way that we can run our business now. So understanding what is required there and um, that that's going to be part of our part of our journey. Um, Source Connect is something that we need as working pros. Um, and we don't, we want to have it set up to be available um, when, when we do need it, ready to flip the switch. However, um, not necessarily that we need it before we have, we don't have to get it until we need it. So that's, that's one of those um, shoestring things, right? $35 a month is on a shoestring is significant. So um, yes, let's keep on going. Okay. So Let's talk about the evolution of your booth. Start where you are. Let me just you know, start where start where you are and trust that you are in evolution. You are evolving. This will be moving forward. Um, start with where you are with what you can. So um, a very simple way of, of approaching that is um, taking the perspective that putting a microphone, a microphone is actually the thing that needs to be to be um, uh, to have the sound <laughs> protection, right? So a simple canvas box um, with a refurbished uh, um, Apogee um, and a refurbished iPad Mini is a great way to start. And Sensei Steph, um, I know this. You this is like where I want to invite you in to share a little bit about about what you've done and how you approach this because I think you are a maestra of making good things, making good things sound good. And I think you also have a, a little bit of sensibility of making things look nice too, from what I've seen. I um, try. Yeah. <laughs> of course I tell, I tell my, <laughs> I tell my clients in sessions that no matter what's going on, I can always sound really well-dressed. That's for sure. <laughs> um, Yes, but I love all the, the the stuff that you did here. Absolutely. This is great. And we all started with DIY throw it together studios. Mm -hmm. We Tish and I both were rose up in the days of going to a studio. So we got to just be the talent, which was a treat mm -hmm. and still is. That's just not the way of the world. We're not going back to that. Mm -hmm. So um 
if you've never had any recording engineer experience, no experience recording, no experience setting up a home studio, you're not alone. That's how we've all started. It's mm -hmm. nothing new. And absolutely, um, I love that thing that you said that Dan Leonard says, you start, you don't spend a lot of money to start. You, I, I can't remember what the quote was. <laughs> um, but, right, and yeah. and yeah. a lot of the microphones that she talked about, um, the, the thing about the condenser mics is that they need to be powered. That's why she was talking about, Tish was talking about those different interfaces because the, the higher the condenser mic, the more expensive, the Neumanns and the road, there's a road shotgun. There's all these different things. Those need to be powered because they are super, super sensitive. I did not start with any of those mics. I started with a USB mic. I can't remember the brand. Mm -hmm. um, I started in a closet when I first started trying to do, you know, my home studio. Um, I started with, uh, I did Audacity. I never really liked it. Fortunately, I had a, a good friend that is uh, knew Adobe Audition really well. And so he looped me in and he was like, yeah, it's easy. And I'm like, okay, let's back up just a smidge. And so fortunately, I had been working in music, music studios. I loved watching engineers throw Pro Tools stuff around. Pro Tools, way more technology than a voiceover artist needs. Pro Tools is the absolute standard. If you already know it, then great. But I tried to get Pro Tools and teach myself Pro Tools. And I'm like, ah, this is more than I need. Okay. Because I'm not doing 50 tracks of drum kits. You know, I'm just doing a voice, maybe two. Okay. So this was something that I made a choice very early on um, to you know, switch to Adobe Audition because I found it to be very user-friendly for voiceover, okay? So yes, but the closet, and if you don't have a walk-in closet, um, something, the, the thing that we've got, the, the canvas box here, um, my issue with that has always been the script creates a bouncing sound. Mm. If you yeah, have you to have the script in front of you, paper bounces, reflects, an iPad, maybe the iPad is a little bit. So I never had very good luck with these personally. Um, one thing that I did at one point when I was living in Los Angeles, I took a corner of my bedroom <laughs> and I got a tall desk, you know, one of the desks that's more vertical. It's a very small house anyway, tall desk instead of a wide one. I bought some cheap acoustic pads that I found on Craigslist because there's always somebody who's tearing up their home studio and selling them for cheap, especially in Los Angeles, but you can really find stuff like that anywhere. Um, and I filled the corner of my tall desk with these acoustic pads. I put one sort of under one of the shelves. I made sure I sort of leaned in and had my microphone in there. And, and then this is, this is a tip that I know we were, and you can interrupt me if you need to, Tish, if I'm rattling on, but one of the things that I also found, and I still have right now is for another temporary space, you know, those uh, screens like room divider screens, there's usually like multi-panel one, two, three, maybe four panels. You guys know what I'm talking about? They're called screens, but they're more like panels. Um, I'll show, I'll take you guys on a tour of the little temporary setup that I have, but they're tall and they, you know, you can put them in a room and they're decorative or whatever. Room divider thing. Right? Room divider thing. Yeah. yeah. And you can get them at Goodwill. You can get them at Wayfair. You can get them at Craigslist. It, it's irrelevant because what you're doing, what I have done is again, taking Oralex or uh, acoustic panels, you know, egg crate type looking panel things. And, and I'll go through this in just a minute, but I attach them to the back of that screen unit so that then I'm sitting in the corner. I've been sitting in the corner of my bedroom with acoustic panels in front of me. And then I get one of those tall screens and then I put the acoustic panels behind me as well. So I've got some sound absorption behind my head. I've got sound absorption in front of me and then you can balance one on top, but it's, it's a good, it's a, it's a good setup, a good temporary setup, but also great for auditions in, but it's, it's this idea great for practicing to get yourself used to 
being also a recording engineer. Um, and because another rule of all of these things is if you are auditioning, you need to prepare for the possibility of booking the job. So mm-hmm. if you, if you make something that's like, okay, it sounds pretty good for auditions. And then you get the job and it's still not great. You don't want to get to that place. You want to make sure that you can back it up if you get the job, you know, um, yeah, I think I think previous previously there was a there was the option of having audition audition quality studio, and now really whatever we make, however it looks or however um, however we're we're putting it together, um, it does need to be a session quality sound. Yeah. Um, and luckily, you know the the threshold of what session quality sound has uh, shifted. I think a little bit too so yeah definitely and and it's you know there is a lot of consideration like tish was talking about as your ambient sound that you have in your home you know do you have a pet that is exceptionally loud do you have a child that you know uh is is going to be making their own sound do you have helicopters above quite a bit do you have are you on a street you know so all of these things impact what kind of little DIY studio you can create. Mm -hmm. Um, But again, the the biggest thing that I, that I want to press is this is where we all started. It's, it's not, I did not start with a Neumann. I did not start with the road. I was always a headphone snob. So I have to admit, I did start (laughs) with the Bayer dynamic. I love my headphones and this is just because of, I'm an audio junkie. So (laughs) But yeah, I started with a USB, like I said, and, and again, worked my way up because there's also that important lesson that, and it's good that everybody's here with the dojo because you still need to learn all the skills and the crafts and the conversationalism and the trends and the stuff that have to do with what you are saying, not just you know how you are saying, what you are saying, the vibe you are creating. Know that... A perfect sound, but a l- delivery that sounds, oh, maybe they're not quite there or they're they're faking it or they haven't had enough training. That's not going to book you a job. The perfect delivery with sound that's like, eh, it sounds a little, that's not going to book you a job. Mm-hmm. So there is sort of this, it used to be, you could just train, you could be the talent, you can be the most amazing gifted person in the world. And never have to touch a recording, you know, record, pause, edit, any of that stuff. Now you can learn both, but understand that you can learn both. You don't have to be a total, total gearhead mm-hmm. um, to know this. They've the the arc of it of of uh, recording programs and recording engineering programs has come a long way because there was this realization that. People wanted to know this skill. They needed, it needed to be user-friendly. It's kind of like the way computers have evolved. Mm-hmm. Recording software has evolved also. Yeah. So don't try not to be intimidated. You know, I know it can be overwhelming and people get very frustrated. Why do I have to learn this? Well, <laughs> you do, you, do. <laughs> you know, it's well, like. Yeah, this is, this is a great point. And this is what we're getting to. Like we, we need both, we both need both the skills and the sound. Um, and um, mm-hmm. so let, let's keep on going in the evolution. Um, the, the, another thing that you can do in addition to finding the things, finding the elements um, and creating with what you have, um, you can create a, a, a PVC pipe booth. Um, one of our dojo members, uh, Spencer Krull, who's a dojo black belt now in the nth degree, uh, put together this little, uh, little um, overview of what he's created for his travel gear that's a variation of the PVC booth that he put together, uh, that he put together for himself. But um, let me see if this is Spencer. Spencer. Uh, Can you guys hear it? Uh, I made a three by three triangle booth. I guess. (laughs) So I can travel with it. But this is a perfectly fine audition booth uh, to use at home or however you want to use it. So I was going to show you the the show are three quarter inch PVC. These are 34 inch pieces of PVC, basically the whole thing is built uh, with these 30, uh, 34 inch pieces of PVC and these 90 
degree elbows. Uh, PVC costs, uh, I think if you get it at Home Depot for a three quarter inch, uh, 10 foot piece, I think uh, if you buy more than five of them, they're like 487 a uh, piece. Uh, I built this uh, using six pieces of uh, 10 foot PVC. So that's uh, the materials there. And these uh, knuckles, depending on where you get them, they go anywhere from like 99 cents to about a buck 50. So it just uh, depends on where you go to shop for them. All right, here's what it looks like. Okay, so right now here's the here's the base of it, okay? It's three by three. So is it huge? No. Is it enough room to move around and record in? Certainly. So uh, this is what I have for the base. The problem is now I have to connect them. And connectors for PVC come in 90 and 45 degree angles. And if anybody knows, remembers anything from a geometry class, I need 60 degree angles. So I had to create them by making a hinge. Really, really simple to do. The great things about PVC is it's very, very easy to work with. You don't have to saw or anything like that. If you're going to cut it, you use a cutter like this, like a pair of scissors. It clamps on to the PVC, right? So you cut it off. Now, what I do is I have these T pieces and I take one and a half inch pieces of, uh, I cut them to one and a half inch strips and I put them into the T pieces like that and I join them together. All right, so I have three of the little connectors, the short one and a half inch pieces that I have and I make an H shaped connector like this. Now, this is how it fits in, this is how it works. Uh, as a hinge. For so the these are the pieces of PVC. These are, this is what I have uh, uh, as my base. So I have these uh, 90 degree, I have the 90 degree elbows. I take the H hinge and I put them here and I put this one here and now I'm able to have the 90 degree angle. So yeah, I can make it any angle I want. Now I'm using three by three. I could use, I could make it two sides three and another side four, so I can have any angle I need to accommodate the size of the triangle platform uh, that I want. These also serve as the supports for the vertical pieces, uh, uh, which are gonna go forward to create the rest of the booth. So here's what it's gonna look like when it's put together. And this is what it looks like. This is it now as a triangle uh, put together. Uh, the piece uh, to the left of the screen there is just, it's modified for this booth design. I'm, I'm doing something a little bit different with it than I normally do, but there it is. It's just the hinges. Now we're going to put up the vertical pieces, uh, which will create the rest of the, uh, what we have now at this point is the booth so far with the, uh, there are the vertical posts. And as you see here, I have another one of those hinges. Uh, on the top of, of uh, each of the corners. So now you're going to take the cross pieces for the top and those are going to be connected here to these hinges. And we're going to go here is uh, the booth. This is the uh, frame of the booth right there. So we have the hinges on top, hinges on the bottom, and of course, just the cross beams. Really, really simple design. So now it's time to put up the walls. What do I use for walls? I use moving blankets. Now, uh, I put grommets in the moving blankets because I like to hang them uh, using zip ties. But just as good as, uh, as that is, I also use clips. So I'm just going to show you how I put it together with clips. I start hanging the blankets up. I clip them uh, in place. I'm going to do it again with another. So here's the booth now with the uh, clips holding the blankets in place. This is just two moving blankets. Moving blankets are about uh, $25 a piece for the, uh, for the inexpensive ones. I like to go up a little bit. I get uh, slightly thicker ones. The other thing you can do is just hang two sets of moving blankets on this frame. Uh, I wouldn't do more than two on three quarter inch PVC, but if you have one inch PVC, you can certainly hang much heavier blankets. Right, here it is, I didn't put the top on it yet, but uh, here is how I enter it. I just pull open a flap. Yeah. And uh, I come into the booth. Now, I don't have the top on because I want you to be able to see, but uh, but here it is. This is the interior. So here it is. This is the booth. Uh, I threw a uh, blanket on top of it. So could I have done it neater? Of course, I could have done it neater, but I'm kind of rushing today. And when you want to go in the booth, you just pull open this wonderful flap. You walk in and uh, you should uh, hear the echoes. It should change the sound quality. Mm -hmm. Wait a second, a little dark in here. What's that? Oh, that's right. I have an LED light <laughs> that I put up here. Um, <clears throat> so this is it. It's a fairly comfortable booth. I could certainly, um, you know, this does sound absorption. Uh, it doesn't block out outside sound, but it does get rid of many of the echoes. Um, so that's it.
Yay. Uh, great. Well, uh, hopefully, hopefully that was was helpful. Um, Spencer's going to give um, more. Uh, um, Spencer's going to sh also share an, a one sheet about how he puts it all together, and um, and also a, a tour of his home booth that he's created a variation of that. So hopefully that was helpful and helps you recognize um, how simple it, it, it can be to get started. Um, uh, I'm going to breeze through a couple of other more evolutions of things, um, putting things in the closet. Um, hold on one second. Let me get us down here again. Um, uh, putting things in the closet. This is a little, this is a little solution that I've created as a travel thing. Uh, oh, can you guys still see it? Yeah. You can still see? Yes. Okay. Great, great, great. Um, um, get a pack of 20 velvet hangers, put five on one side, five on the other, one in the middle, and I put my Apogee mic in the middle of it and hang it up in whatever closet I happen to be in, put my computer in there. Um, so that's that's a that's a way that you can do it either permanently. Um, this is a picture of my dedicated closet before I had this booth um, that had a little uh, alcove that I was able to make into a, an audiobook thing and then a curtain that created the space. Um, and uh, my booth, uh, oh, this is actually a picture of Sensei Katz uh, set up in her room. So she's put panels, she's made the whole room her studio, which is another option that you can do rather than building something within a room, you can make the whole room your, um, your and um, these, these are panels that you can make yourself. Uh, Sensei Kat can, uh, um, We'll ask her to share share how she does those panels um, as well. If you'd like more information about that, let us know. Um, and then um, this is this is my studio. Um, this is another thing that when you are ready to make the leap to having a, a, a whisper room or a, a studio bricks or something, somebody is always selling theirs. Somebody's moving. So this is a six by six whisper room uh, that was originally $12,000 and I got it for $4,000. It cost $1,000 to get it moved and put up, but there's ways that you can get um, nice, nice things uh, set up. Um, so um, I would love to... I'm sorry to interrupt you um, because I am going to have to to leave early. I want to show. Can I show them something very quickly? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I wanted to show you guys what I was talking about. I do have uh, in my Los Angeles home and my uh, I live in Arizona now. I've built um, ten by ten, ten by fifteen. Basically, one of them is a converted tough shed, and then there's this one out here with all the paneling, I'm not gonna show you those things because those are the the ultimate, you know, of like having your own standalone studio next to the house that has to be property you own and all that stuff. We're talking about DIY stuff right now. I'm gonna take you. I'm currently renting a house um, here in Arizona and it's a space that I do not own. So I can't go drilling into the walls, even hanging panels um, is minimal. So what I have done, this is the thing I was telling you about. I'm going to turn this around. Hopefully this is the little DIY creation. These are the screens I was talking about. You see it's multiple panels. Bought this one at Goodwill. I also bought this one at Goodwill. Uh, just like you saw here, here's one of these moving blankets. I have spare old blankets that have holes in them. I'm using that. We walk into my little area here. I have a desk and then I bought one of these standing things that adjusts up high. I got that on Craigslist, I think for 50 bucks. I have an old monitor and I have a laptop here. Okay, this is one of my microphones, but as you see, I do have, there's a brand called Aurelex, A-U-R-E-L-E-X. It's a little bit more expensive of a acoustic panel, but I like it because I could hang it from my ceiling with fish hmm. wire, fish cord, fish string, whatever it's called. Um, and it doesn't, and I can do those little you know, little screw things that won't impact the ceiling that my landlord won't get mad about later. Um, and then I have some other spare, I have all kinds of scraps of, 
of acoustic panels through the years. I have some more on this side. You get, uh, it's really hard to see for this thing here, but I get um, these panels. Here's a hot tip that I learned. You take old cardboard, you cut it to the size of the panel, you get spray Gorilla Glue, you spray that cardboard to the back of the panel, and then you can attach them to the wall from different means. Because I found out the hard way that trying to attach an acoustic panel to a wall doesn't work. <laughs> it will peel off, take the paint with it. So you, you attach the cardboard to the back of the panel and then you can attach stuff to that cardboard. So you're basically attaching cardboard to the wall instead. So there's another little DIY tip for you. Obviously the cardboard side facing the wall. Okay, that's what I just wanted to show you that really quickly. I do not have pictures of my tricked out studios because Ooh. those, are, but yeah, what I decided to do was build studios because whisper rooms, I, I'm not comfortable and I like, I prefer the air coming through and all that stuff like she was talking about. And you you run your sessions from, from there? Yes, I, I, when I have a session, like a recording session, I tend to, I'll go to my studio, especially if it's Source Connect, because then I can mm -hmm. you know, plug it into the ethernet rather than wireless and the sound is much more, yeah. yeah. Excellent. So. Excellent. Well, thanks, Susie. Yeah. I know you, I know you have to run. So if you if you need to go, um, that's that's great. If you guys have any questions, let us know. Um, we're going to wrap up here. Um, so uh, yeah. So um, what I'd love to do is um, bring this back up. Bring us back up, and let's see. Share my screen, and um, I'd like to um. Oops, I need the whole thing. I'd like to uh, have Tyler Ashley join us and um, um, share a little bit about how we can help you um, if if this has been helpful and you'd like to have some more support. You don't have to do it alone. We're all about consistency, continuity, connection, and community. Um, so uh, Tyler Ashley, why don't you take it away? Here, I'll stop the share again. Um, we have um, a way to keep in touch. So let's see. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Tish. Um, I'm not going to take up too much of your time because I want you guys to have an opportunity to ask questions. So my name is Tyler Ashley. I'm the talent consultant here at the VO Dojo. Any questions, concerns, anything about your voiceover journey, we actually offer complimentary voiceover onceovers. And that consult is for, for you to just understand and just be like, okay, what do I want? Why do I want it? How can I get there? Where am I on my voiceover journey? And how can I get to the next place? So that is where we meet you where you are and we help you with that. So um, that's the link right there. Um, Jeffrey's also going to put it in the chat, www.thevodojo.com slash VOO, which is the voiceover onceover complimentary to you guys. Um, and then we have a few other things that I like to discuss on the consults um, about our different training programs and what best fits you on your journey that will go in uh, specifically. But that's it. I'm going to back it on up so I can give time for you guys to ask those questions. Yeah, excellent. Thank you, Tyler. Um, all right. Well, what what questions do you guys have right now? What what resonated with you? What what was helpful? Um, uh, what other questions do you have? Uh, Looks like uh, Lena's got her hand. Yeah, Lena. And thank you, Tish. You're amazing. I love your emails. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a, it's, it, it, it looks like a mud cave and very similar to Stephanie's. Um, I've had a really crazy work year and now I'm leaving this job and I'm going to get back into voiceover because I've been doing it for a long time. And I wanted to know if I were to do the little stand up studio, how do you breathe in there? <laughs> what do you do? Uh, like, it looks like very claustrophobic. What do you suggest? Um, for especially if you're going to be in there for a long time, like an hour, an hour and a half, you just take breaks and go out and breathe or 
Um, yeah, I mean, I think uh, that, you know, I think I think that is uh, that is part of the reality when you're creating an enclosed space and are a human that generates heat, right? Or it, you live in an environment where there's heat, right? So um, I think that, you know, having having fans that you can like open up and get air circulating, like take a break and get air circulating. I know even like when I do audiobooks at Dion, there's there's fantastic studios and and booths and things like that. And when we take a break, they turn on the fans and get things going. So um Yeah. Yeah. Um and another question for such a small, because I'm a renter, I live in an apartment and I'm in the same situation. I can't make holes and all that. And my rooms are very small. What would you recommend for a stand? Because you, you know, you've got the adaptable a little, a little bit three feet area, but then you need to put your script and whatnot or your laptop on a yeah. stand. What what do you well, um, I think I think in um in Spencer's booth uh, in his home home studio booth not his travel booth he's created little things within the PVC that allow him you know he you can get if you have a PVC thing you could get a gooseneck you could put a boom arm that just connects to those things so you don't even need a stand you could get your your mic so that it's coming from above either in a gooseneck or with a boom arm or something like that. Um, another another sa space saving solution is that there's stands that have um, a circle, a, a sort of weighted circle at the end instead of a big, uh, big tripod. Like that's another way to make a smaller footprint for a mic stand. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good, good. good. Um, we're coming up right up on time. So, um, but but we can stay a little bit longer to do more questions. Um, if you do have to leave, would love to have you put your dojo O in the in the chat. What was one thing that made you go Oh? Um, and even if it's you know sometimes coming to things like this, like Oh, I've got all that under control. Excellent. <laughs> um, then you can ask, you know, then then it's the next layers of questions. So sometimes it's it's reassuring just to do that. Um, but yeah, I would love to hear what you're taking away and um, open to other questions. Do you need to roll, Steph? I do. Thank okay, you, guys. Awesome. I'm so glad you showed up. Yeah, you're not alone. We've all been through the arc of this. So hang in there <laughs> and, and you'll get there, you know, but it's it it takes a time and you'll be fine though. Don't don't get in a panic over it. Yeah. We've all been and there. and you know, to to be really, really reassuring, um, there's a lot of people during the pandemic who have had massive careers that have been based that were previously totally based by going into studios, who mm -hmm. also had the same like, ah. What yeah. do you mean? I have to build a place in my what's house. The, yeah. Yeah. Um, and what's so the source connect? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody's everybody's been on this on this uh, learning curve. So yeah. you have to keep you have to be flexible. That's part of the career. It changed trends change, requirements change, you know. So yeah. you just hang yeah. in there. But thank you all so much for coming. I'm glad to see you here. Yeah, at the I, yeah. I hope to see you um, in classes and stuff. See you later. Bye. Yeah. What other questions do we have or insights or thoughts or what, what, what we have this time here? What questions do you have? Anyone? I think we were so thorough. We, we, we cleared all questions of anything. <laughs> I have a question as well. Oh, yes, yes. This is Kevin. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Kevin. Hey. What's your question? Okay, hang on. Let me find out what you're talking about. I think I still found it. Um, hang on. Ah, right here. So, um, about the, the the home studio, then. So, a home studio is like a setup with budgets and so on, I guess. Yes. It's, it's like a what? A budget. With uh, a home studio, it's like a uh, the, it's like a budget thing to set up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, absolutely. So a home studio is something that you absolutely need to have at some point in your voiceover career, right? When you're first starting out and training, if you're not sending out auditions, um, if you're not sending out auditions yet, if you're building your skills, 
um, you can be taking time to build your space. Think about more where are you going to play? Where are you going to create, cr make your creation space, right? So at first, you don't have to have a, a session ready studio while you're building your skills. Um, you do need to, though, you'll notice that there's a difference between working on your phone wherever or having something that you have to keep on pulling out when you're working on something to this is my this is my recording space in my house right so you can keep on building on it you don't need this right away um at some point you will be making a choice to be um sending things out into the world and then this is where it needs to be at a certain point right all along if you if this is something that you're doing as a business this is um you can't if, if you if your business is a lemonade stand you have to have lemons right you have to have you have to have this is where we do our thing this is how we work so um you need to have something to start with um, and you need to start thinking of your business as a business and that there will be expenses for that business and then you know um buy the bootstraps right and this is where we we work to buy equipment and then we invest the money that we make in voiceover back into into getting the next the next thing right um so yeah uh, creating a budget and understanding that part of what you're spending on um your development is going to be need needing to needing to set some budget you know what can you do if you if you have a hundred dollars then what can you do by asking people um being really creative and thinking outside of the box right there's ways you can get things there's ways you can get things um you know enter concepts um create relationships you know make, like you there if if you were a little kid who was three years old and wanted a cookie figure out how to get the cookie, right? You don't, if you don't have, if you don't have this much money, then either what can you do to earn that much money, right? What are other things that you can be doing to get yourself started? Um, uh, what are creative ways to do it? You know, so I know, I know people who've gotten started because some musician had like a shit ton of microphones and said, here, you want one? Uh, yeah. Um, so, you know, so so think creatively. But what your question is, Kevin, yes, uh, we do need to think in, be thinking in a business mindset of what is our budget and then what we can do with that budget. Does that all make sense? Um, yeah. And no one starts a business with no expenses. Sorry. <laughs> it's just not a thing. <laughs> there can be low expenses, but not if you're investing in a business, you're building your business. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, what other questions? I noticed in the chat we got one from Howard, Howard Breslau. Mm -hmm. I hope you said your name correctly. Oh, and I see one from John here too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So for getting work, well, it's kind of it's kind of a whole nother webinar, Howard. Um, um, and uh, and it would probably it, you know, and then I would probably need to ask you questions. Um, uh, in in a nutshell, um, uh, figure out know know what's going on. Know know what the business is. Know what you're bringing to the business. Decide what you want to do in the business. And then there's there's lots of different ways that you can build your business. So um, uh, how uh, recommendations for for getting work? Uh, uh, train, get your ten thousand hours in. Um, do this consistently. Do it regularly, and then um, and then you know then figure out how you want to build your business. There's lots of different ways to uh, to approach getting work. And it depends on what kind of work you want, uh, what you know, where, where your voice suits. Um, so it's, it's a little, it's a little bit of an uh, of a of another webinar question. But um, if you would like to, Howard, um, uh, sign up for a VOO, we can like um, we can we can talk more about that. And you know, uh, on those VOO guys, we don't have to just talk about what we talked about today. We'll we'll basically be talking about you and what questions you had. Um, 
uh, in terms of like basic, uh, like basics. Um, uh, one one path is getting re getting your skills to a, a level that you're working with an agent that you have audition opportunities happening there. There's things called pay to plays um, where you invest a little bit of money and have audition uh, opportunities come to you. So you're being kind of your own agent through that um, opportunity. You can build relationships with with uh, clients directly through direct marketing. Um, you can. Um, you can build, you know, you can build from who who you know already. You can build relationships. Um, so there's there's lots. Th those are some basic basic ways to do it. So, yeah, yeah. Hopefully that's helpful. And I would love to talk with you more, Howard, if 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 that would be helpful. So, um, let's see. What other questions do we have, Jeffrey? Uh, I saw one from Michael Goldberg. Hello, Michael. Newlywed, Michael Goldberg. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, uh, what's your question? Uh, you mentioned it a little bit, but if you're recording in a tight spot, um, a very tight space, um, you know, in terms of having a stand or anything else in the room with you, you mentioned a couple. What are could you just review that? Maybe even a few more ways of economizing a really tight space. What's essential and how can you get other things in there? Yeah. Um, well, I think um, I think there's a couple ways to think about it, like think outside of the box. Again, um, Steph started talking about using the vertical, right? So how can you have things coming in from above, right, is, is one way. So you don't have to have a, a stand or if you have a small space, there's, um, you know, there's there's um, mic stands that are like on um, sort of like Pixar, -y, um, Pixar -y, uh, arms. Right. You know, so, so think about how, how else you could get be in relationship with your microphone. And, you know, as as Steph was like, how, how are things coming down? Um, uh, you can um you can have a setup where your computer is outside and you have a bluetooth you have like a you know um sometimes for for um for fan noise too having a computer outside and like a a, a, a bluetooth um monitor with a bluetooth you know you can you can not have the whole thing you don't have to have the whole thing in the booth you can have it outside of the booth. Um, kind of changes your workflow a little bit. Um, uh, let's see. Um, I'm trying to think what what other things in terms of how to make things concise. Um, what is what is the space that you're working in? I'm like, still like dimensions? putting it together, but like you know, I was looking at the PVC setup, and those are like really tight. So. But, well, um, that PVC, so that PVC setup is Spencer's travel. So he fits it in a duffel bag. So ah, he right. spends his time between LA and New York. Um, but um, but if you think about it, that's like a just a little Lego. That's like a little Lego thing, right? So you could have, you know, you could have longer things or more elements or build a square rather than a little triangle, mm. right? So you can you can kind of create the space, right? Yeah, yeah. And then you have okay. to create, you know, then that creates variations of, you know, what happens in a six foot boot, you know, in a six foot space is different than what happens. And, you know, you do want to make sure that you're not in, that it doesn't sound like you're in a tube, you know, that you don't want to be in such a confined space that that the sound is is impacted that way. Is that helpful? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Thank you. Um, You know, and, and you do want to have, you do want to have room to use your instrument right we don't want to be like hello right. yeah so yeah cool thank well, you uh, yeah a couple more minutes any other any other questions i think that was something anything any any other questions uh, i've been trying to help answer in the chat as well so i think all the outstanding ones have been answered okay great well, um, thank you, everybody. We're really looking forward to um, really looking forward to getting to talk with you more. 
um, and we're here to help in however way we can. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. Um, next month for Get to Know VO, um, our vocal sensei, Faith Rumor, is going to be joining us. She's going to join us for Ask the Sensei and uh, be doing some um, vocal uh, a webinar on vocal health and, and things like that. Um, so put that in your calendar for next month. And um, yeah. And uh, yeah, please, uh, please find time on our calendars because we, uh, we are here to help you and look forward to having you in the mix. So Jeffrey, thank you so much for always making everything run smoothly. Great to see you guys. I look forward to hearing your voices and uh, talking with you more. Hey, thank you. <laughs> Bye, everybody. See you next month. See you next month. Bye, guys. See you too, Kev. Bye. Bye.